Hello and welcome to A Live After Reading. I'm Tim Niederreiter and welcome to a very special episode <laughs> of A Live After Reading wherein a returning guest, uh, Jared Murdoch, joins the show. Welcome back to the show, Jay. Welcome. You were going to call me K something and I'm like, no, 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 not K. I got confused. The other letter. confused. Yeah, sorry about that. So many letters. You're drawing attention to it though. Nobody would have noticed otherwise. You know, that's not podcast work. It's there and it's gone. Anyway, here we are. And Murdoch, how's it been going lately? Things have been very, very busy, unfortunately not in the writing arena, which mm -hmm. I am hopefully going to be getting back into very soon this year. Uh, work ramped up significantly, uh, stress ramped up significantly. I've got a daughter graduating college, just a whole lot of things all hitting at the same time. And, you know, life life has a tendency to roll on you once in a while. So I, I do have five books that I need to edit and get covered and get published. And it's about time that I actually got them out there into the real world. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good chunk of books, lots of fiction there. So, but we're here more specifically today to talk about, well, you know, a set of books that's not those five books necessarily. Uh, no, it is not. Yeah, it's uh, the Steampunk Story Bundle over on storybundle.com slash steampunk. Very excited about that. Yeah, um, yeah, we both I, did it. <laughs> Yes, Kevin, Kevin J. Anderson actually is the host of the bundle, and he put a post on Facebook, and I just happened to be scrolling through, and I saw him saying, hey, anybody got a steampunk book? I'm, I'm like, well, why not? <laughs> so I, I have a couple of steampunk books, and I was actually hoping that I could get Jack Kane and the Statue of Liberty in this bundle, mm. but... Unfortunately, I don't own that book myself. Mm. So it would have to go through my writing partner, Mike Plestad, and then through our publisher. And then obviously the funds from the bundle would go to the publisher before they came to us and there would be the split there. So I decided, you know, it would be better to put my Golden West book one out there, which coincidentally, Mike Plestad, Scott Roche, and myself for a one-year period had the Action Pack podcast. And this book was that book I wrote over the course of that year, mm -hmm. releasing one chapter a year. So, oh, a day, you mean, or a week? You said a year. Over the course of a year, yes. We but you, you one wrote over a year, you said one. one chapter a month. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yes. Just wanted to make sure I was hearing the right words there. Anyway. No, that's awesome. Actually, I have a copy of this book on my Kindle, I think, but... I didn't realize it was steampunk. It's got a very subtle cover, which is not bad, but it's like, I thought it was actually a Western given the title, you know? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> and and not a steampunk Western. Western, you know? Yeah. Yep, it is a steampunk Western. I probably could have picked a better with the title and subtitle, but uh, yeah, once you actually get into the book, uh, the, the steampunk elements are right there. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so this, yeah, this bundle has a lot of other authors, and it's got, you know, 12, I think, 12 authors total 13 i, I we, i'm losing track and i'm sorry if i forget if we forget anybody but we got kevin on mclaughlin and Anthony sharp yeah there's got, there's a ton of authors in there yeah, uh, there's 13 because we got yeah. two by kevin j anderson in there yeah yeah and including the collection that kevin uh authored with neil pert the, the two clockwork books the uh, clockwork angels and uh, clockwork lives i believe very excited to get uh i'll be obviously buying one of the bundles just because i do that every time i'm included <laughs> in a bundle but uh very excited to to get those books i do have the graphic novels and the artwork in those graphic novels is phenomenal are you uh, a rush fan i am a very big rush fan so <laughs> when i saw that when i saw that kevin anderson was doing that with neil pert uh rest his soul mm -hmm. i was excited because neil pert is more artistic than people tend to realize uh, they, they think of Neil Peart as a drummer or percussionist, but he was also very involved with the writing of the books and the creating of the worlds. Yeah. And, and rush, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I mean, it's a generational divide to some degree, but I have enjoyed the rush. I've listened to, I've listened to a couple of their albums pretty heavily and, but a lot of them I have not just gotten around to because I'm, I'm so much of a metal head. I like rush, but the metal always creeps in and I just, and rush is great. I mean, I like prog rock too. Yep. And there are the, 
the is the corresponding album that goes along yeah. with the Clockwork Angels as well. Anyway, anyway, that's. Uh, I, I do want to get into a little bit more about what your book's about, though, in this bundle, because that's kind of while we're here to promote the bundle, we're also here to talk about ourselves and our book and your book, especially because you're the guest here. I mean, nominally. <laughs> oh, I would love to talk about these other authors. I'm hoping you can get some of the other ones on to the podcast. Uh, I, that would be I would love to talk to anybody, any of the other authors on here. And the bundle is a limited time offer, folks. That's the other thing. It's a limited time. I don't exactly remember the date, but if it's somewhere in the end of, by the end of March, this this chicken will have flown the coop. So jump right yeah, on it. It goes live. I believe it's only for, I believe it's 30 days in, out, done. And yeah. this bundle is gone. And that's the great thing about this bundle is you pay a little bit, you get a couple of books, you pay a little bit more, you get uh, half the books, you pay a little bit more, you get all the books. Yeah, if you're not, and I believe it'll be... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I believe it's fifteen dollars, sir, and you get the entire bundle, uh, yeah. and you get all fourteen books in the entire bundle. Yeah, if you're not familiar with story bundle, it is pay what you want, but the more you pay, it's a certain point you get more. So, so I've, I've indulged in story bundle type deals before, and I think they're really cool. And you know, if you're into steampunk, especially, this is there's just no there's no getting around the value pack here. I mean, I got a book in there, Ten Liars is in there, um, but. And that, that book alone would set you back five bucks normally. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> An ebook. Uh, and it's also, I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly how big some of these other ones are, but Ten Liars is a big old epic book. It's 500 pages long. So if you're, if you're looking for a lot to read, you've got a lot in this bundle. I mean, I don't know what, you know, hey. it adds up. Even with, even with your book alone, I know my book is not quite 500 pages. I believe it's around the 220-page <laughs> range. So it is. It is a one of the smart, probably one of the smaller books in this in the collection. I know a couple of these other ones are, you know, they're doorstops, especially yeah. the Kevin Anderson ones. They're doorstops, plain and simple. Yeah, and Kevin. Oh, there's another one. Kevin's got in here, Mister Wells and the Martians. So yeah, yes. and yeah, I, I imagine that looks like a War of the Worlds kind of uh, tie-in or a takeoff. Yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be one. I haven't read it. I would like to read it. I haven't even read the description of it, but I'm assuming that that one is going to have Orson or. Uh, no, um, Wells H. G. Wells. Wells, one of the main characters. Yeah, yeah. H. G. Wells. I was say Orson Wells. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's completely the wrong person. No, well, not um, totally the H. wrong H. person because he was also associated with the War of the Worlds broadcast. And, right? and that's yeah, so that's the so radio cast. And the author was H. G. Wells. Yeah. Yes, totally messing with my mind. But I'm guessing <laughs> that's where it's actually going to have H. G. Wells meeting the Martians probably before the War of the Worlds happens. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing tripods on the cover though. It's it's, it's interesting. interesting. I loved the War of the Worlds growing up, so. That was really fascinating to me. Oh, yeah. And I actually went and listened to the radio broadcast when I was older just because I never had heard it. And I'm like, wow, I can see how people tuning in late would get totally messed up with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's just the, the price of admission in some, on some level here is the, you know, the scares were too real back then, I guess. I mean, nowadays, I would just everyone would be like, yeah, it's just the Internet, you know? <laughs> yeah, they'd shrug it off. Yeah, it's like whatever. Nothing matters anymore. So, yeah. Anyway, well, so uh, what's Golden West about? I mean, West Golden about, West yeah. is the story of a young girl and her father. And the first book, Westward Ho, is essentially them packing up their lives in New York. And they've been tasked with going to California to help with the gold rush, mm -hmm. to help the mining operation that's out there get going. So the first book is literally their journey across the country in the 1800s. And I had a lot of fun doing the research of this book, you know, where the railroads end in St. Louis and there's literally no other way to get across the rest of the country except by horse or wagon. And this is where the father, who's an inventor and has been working on inventing new modifications for trains, gets a series of equipment together and builds I'm doing air quotes here, a horse, which is a large mechanical steam powered horse that they use to get across the rest of the country. <laughs> and they encounter giants and the military out there trying to stop the giants from invading other parts of the country and Native Americans. And eventually they, they find their way to California through many trials and tribulations. And one of the father's nemesis is following them the entire way trying to stop them from getting there so he can claim the glory for himself well cool you know i uh, i i got you i did have a hang up about giants so bear with me for a moment mm -hmm. what, what kind of giants are these i love giants come on 
he's you know, but, giants. I mean, is, or is that a spoiler? It's not really a spoiler. They they don't pop up until somewhere around the middle of the book, and mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to have the typical cowboys and Indians kind of story with the, having it being a Western. So yes, there are native Americans, but I introduced giants as the main affecting factor of people pushing West as quickly as they could. And people are hunting down giants to try oh. and stop them from, well, to allow them to move further West. So is that uh, kind of like a Buffalo analog maybe like the, the hunting of the Buffalo or is it more like, they're these. They're actually intelligent. They're a force to be reckoned with, kind of thing. They they are intelligent, and they are they have their own society mm-hmm. out there. Um, they're basically very large beings that they've been living there for a long time, and they just want to be left alone. Mm. And of course, like I said, people hunt them down, and they defend themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. So there's there's definitely. Some of that, I mean, obviously, it's a very frontier story. I mean, it's got that America in the in the Western expansion era kind yep, of that kind young of America feel. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, so that and, and uh, that always makes me kind of sad because man, I mean, I just always think all those the the amazing people and animals we wiped out just doing that. People just like just going anyway. That's that's neither here nor there. Uh, so. Yeah, so as far as the main process of this book, you said you wrote it, uh, how long ago did you write it? Oh, I want to say this particular book was, I want to say 2012 okay. was when it was written. And as I said, we released this as the Action Pack podcast over the course of a year, releasing one chapter a month over that year. And it was, it was interesting because my plan was to write the entire thing but I wound up writing it and then recording the audio as I was editing it so that I can clean it up really good and then releasing the audio chapter. And then at the end of the year, the book was done and I immediately sat down and wrote book two and book three uh, in very rapid succession afterwards to complete the trilogy. And both of those are significantly larger than the first book. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Book, book three, I believe is pushing the 400, 450 page range. It's, it's, it is a doorstop just because I had so much I wanted to pack in there because not only was I introducing things, I I can't give away the end of the book because sure. there's so much that happens in book two and three, but there is a supernatural element that comes into play at the end of book one that really carries the plot forwards in, in uh, books two and three. Cool, cool. I mean, it sounds actually kind of similar, honestly, to the process I had when I wrote... Uh, Ten liars, because originally I was sent serializing that story as well, but I serialized that on blogs and stuff. Um, but then uh, that now was I think in 2016, maybe. I do not remember exactly, but uh, or maybe 2017. Uh, that was coming out, and uh, but uh, but then I I get I, I always get derailed because I was writing it as I published it, which is very difficult, as you can no doubt attest. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> from the, from this experience alone, like we both did that with these books. But I've cleaned it up a lot, and, I, and this was originally published as three volumes of novellas. But it really makes one big, big story much better than it made three novellas. So it's not now just the one big book, and I'm excited to see what people think of it because it's still not. It hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but the attention it's gotten has been very, very positive, and it's it's gun gun magic fantasy basically. Uh, Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So it's it's not exactly a traditional steampunk setting because it takes place. In another, uh, you know, a secondary world, a fantasy world, but and, it, and that's the fun thing yeah, about yeah. steampunk. There's a lot of variety. It, it yeah. it, exactly. When you when I think of steampunk, you can look at things like Girl Genius, mm-hmm. and that is a completely way out there kind of steampunk. That every time I read it, I'm like, wow, my brain just explodes, and I'm like, I can't wrap my head around all the heterodyne stuff they got going on in that <laughs> series. But it's a phenomenal. But it's a visual thing. Yeah. And that's the fun about, you know, you look at T. Morris and Philippa Ballantyne with the way they did their steampunk, which is a little more subdued and not as, I don't want to say grand, but it's not as massive as some of the steampunk events that I've seen in other books and other Mm. uh, graphical works. It has a lot going on and they're dealing more with the interpersonal relationships 
rather than the grand equipment that some of the stories do deal with. Yeah, it's not the opulence that you'll encounter in like Girl Genius. I mean, Phil and Kai Folio did a great job at that. Oh, and absolutely. Obvious, and and also Phil Folio's art style because he's the he just mostly I think he's the main illustrator. Yes. Is it really did lend itself to that comic? That comic. I remember reading it as a web comic, and I, I I actually really enjoyed the parts I read. It's just so long, I couldn't keep up. I'm not very good at following web comics in general, so I got like I don't know how far into it because there's probably tons of it now if it's still going. I haven't really kept. Oh, it up. it's still yeah, it's it's still going. I oh, want to say boy. they've got t- t- I think twenty plus volumes of Oof. Girl Genius that you could buy as graphic novels right now. That's awesome. I. I think that's I think that's great. It's, it just goes to show what independent creators can do, and you know, because that's that's incredible. Um, oh yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, we we are we are running a little low on time because we have a very limited time frame for this podcast today. Yes, folks, it's gonna be a little bit of a briefer one. But uh, yeah, so Murdoch, if, if you were to name one of the other books in this bundle, which one are you looking forward to reading the most? I'm actually kind of curious because I love reading short stories. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about the perfect perfume and other tales by Athena Sharp. I've heard her name before, but I haven't read any of her works. So I, I'm curious about the short stories in that one. That's the, looks like the only one in the collection. That's a series of short stories. Yeah. Okay. You know, it makes sense. I, I'm not as big of a short story fan in general, but I, I, but so I'm, I'm gravitating more to the de- doors tops. <laughs> Honestly, I, I didn't read Clockwork Angels, so I think that's probably me tops on my list. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my. Just goes to show how uh, kind of poorly read I am. I should be, I should have been all on top of that one. I'd be a big fan of Pride Rock. Oh, and you'll, you'll fantasy. absolutely love the Clockwork Angels. Yeah, okay, you'll love Clockwork Angels and Clockwork Lives. Phenomenal books. Oh, wonderful. So you can speak from experience there, I see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and I've read the books. I have the graphic novels, which I haven't. I've skimmed through the graphic novels just because it's like, you know, you have one vision in your brain. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for me to go to the graphic novel and go, well, that's not quite how I visioned it. And <laughs> they changed a little bit of the story here. And you, you, it's like watching a movie that they made from a book. You tend yeah. to nitpick away at it. and You just... I, I need to clear my brain and enjoy the experience for what it is. Absolutely. So, yeah. So anything else you want to add about the story bundle or anything else we should mention before we get going here? Uh, other than being very excited to be in a bundle once more, um, uh, just know that I am going to be coming back in 2020 and dropping books as soon as I can get these things worked out. As I said, work has hit me hard over the past year. Things appear to be slowing down a little bit more. Again, daughter graduating college soon, but it's time for me to get to, to get my books edited and get them out there into readers' hands and hear what they think about the way the storylines I have that are going. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you know, I'll go on. Sorry. Much like much like you, not everything I write is steampunk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got all sorts of stuff, obviously, but I I gotta say my 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 main plug this time is definitely the bundle, but. Demon Scroll is still out there. It's it's still an excellent book. That's epic fantasy. And Origin of Storms is out there, and that is my pillar universe science fiction, and it is a, a, the biggest and fattest book of them all, actually. It's kind of maybe not ideal for your average space opera reader. Maybe, maybe they want something a little quicker. But whatever. That's how it works. The book ended up being you know the longest book I've ever written, so there you go. Um, <laughs> Uh, authors should always write for themselves first. Absolutely. And I did enjoy that process. It also took forever. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, so people, go to storybundle.com slash steampunk, and the link will be in the show notes. That That's not escaping. It'll be in the show notes for the next couple episodes for sure. And probably you've seen it in the episodes before this one as well, because we're not doing this quite in the order that you'll see. But definitely check that out. Get the bundle. Tons of phenomenal books in there. You know, Clockwork, the Clockwork box set, just alone probably worth the price of admission. So go jump on that. Oh, oh 100%. 100%. Yeah. I believe each one of those books you buy them regularly are going to be seven ninety nine on Amazon. There you go. So 15 bucks that that'll net you 13 books or, or more, actually. I, I need to be better prepared. But tons of books, more books than you'll, than you can shake a stick at. So thanks for listening, everybody. Murdoch, where can people find your work and your website and stuff? 
I am J.R. Murdoch. You can find out more about me at jrmurdoch.com or at ofgnomesanddwarves.com. Please come visit me, sign up for my newsletter, and get a free book. Wonderful. And you can check out my website. I'm Tim Niederreiter. You can check out my website at mentalsellerpublications.com and possibly soon timneederwriter.com. Niederwriter uh, uh, pronounced phonetically. Uh, thanks to Nutty from Nutty Bite, N- Nook Chops from Nutty Bites for uh, supplying that idea for that URL, which is, I can't take credit for it, but it's going to be a lot better for typing into the old search bar. So thanks for listening, that, everybody. That is, that is really <laughs> clever. I, I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Now, yeah, that's, that's how you say my name, folks, and you know, it'll be easy for everyone to get that eventually. So thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Get that bundle, people. <laughs>